Okay, friends, it's the next day. It's the uh, the 10th. Headed up, had some stuff I had to take care of today. Is that pretty? It's about 1 p.m. or so. I just want to get the bed area finished. We're just going to drive in some stakes into those corners and then see about closing up the top. After that, uh, tomorrow we're probably going to redo the fireplace. I learned a lot from this and I'm really confident in being able to do it a lot better. There's also grass clippings down there uh, because during the summer when we cut the grass, I rake it all together, bring it up and dump it out in a spot up here so it's not just laying out on the, the lawn. If we use that and mud, we can actually do our own mortar and stuff for it. Tell you, this really has me wanting to go on our real adventure. Look, there it is. Oh, not, that is not Chapaca Mountain, by the way. Past that corner and out on the other side. But that's where our adventure lies, in that direction. All I need to do, I've got about 10 more days. It's anywhere from the 20th to like the 23rd or something. So about 10 more days I can get supplies and we're headed up the mountain, which will be fun. Uh, it's cold. Even now, right now, it's still, it's cold. So it's really going to be cold up there. It's actually winter up there. All right, we're back. This, this is what we got done yesterday. It's not that bad. I'm really happy with it. I'm also glad that we put enough weight around the tarps that the wind didn't blow it off. Still need to go around with a lot more stone. And see, this it's just too big. I know, I think I talked about this yesterday. Here's our cattail that we got from down by the lake. I soaked it in oil. It soaked for like almost a week. We're gonna burn that later. Legend is it makes a good torch. So yeah, we've got one stake down here in the corner. We're gonna drive another one on the opposite side. Then a stake in this corner. And it's all right holding together pretty nice. And in this corner here and down on both of those. Then we'll lash those two stakes to each other, sandwiching these. You'll see. Oh man, I didn't bring my tripod. Dang it. That's all right. We'll make it work. Yeah, then I'm just going to kind of spread these out like I want them. And then lash them down on the ends is the plan. I'm happy with it so far. I think the chunks of tarp have really symbolized or simulated uh, animal hides really well. Like think about it, if you had some woolly mammoths laying around. So we've still stuck pretty well Neolithic. Now at any moment we can stop and drop and turn around and uh, go with the, the apocalyptic too. What I like about the Neolithic is it works in an apocalyptic kind of situation because if they can make it, we can make it because we'll have a lot more stuff left over, you know? That is one thing. I want to do a video on how to make things last longer because a lot of a lot of our plastics material and stuff are made to biodegrade so in a survival situation it's about getting the most longevity out of our our stuff even my ropes and stuff here these plastic ropes they will biodegrade within like a year or so so i want to do a video about what i do to give a little bit more longevity about them or to them in the future Okay, so one of my one of my things with Neanderthals is that they are uh, okay. So one of my thing with the Neanderthal is that you can find lines in their stuff. What they liked to do was they would carve lines in things. So like in in bones and in stone, and we don't have much evidence of the woodworking that they've done. However, I've noticed that when we, when I want to hold something together, it can slide. So like the lashing, no matter how tight it is, after a little while, it'll start to get loose and, and it'll slide. Like the pole might start sliding like this, you know, it'll work its way out of that lashing. So my theory is that they use the lines 
where is it? Like, hang on, where's my saw? Hang on, I'm gonna cut us a couple lines in this pole. And then you can do the same. So I've got those lines cut out, right? And then you can do the same to the other pole. And it doesn't take much. It's just these little cut marks. Like three or four. And then when that's tied together, the lashing actually grabs to these cut marks and will hold it in place right on both of these poles. I use this technique a lot. Uh, and like I said, I got this from my idea of the... So for my Neanderthal project that I'm working on, I've even broken it down into like how the rope works and stuff, uh, which I'm just going to explain it to you one of these days. I just figured slow is a good start. And that's that's one of the like building building designs that I'm pretty sure Neanderthals used. And I've used it, like I said, I use it in my everyday life. It's more reliable than most knots. Actually, let me show you how it goes together real quick. Well, here, hang on. We'll do that in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Right now, we need to do the stakes here. Okay, so I saved. Here we go. I'd really like to do something like this out in the actual forest. I mean, this is a cool backyard, like, you know, thing to do when I'm not doing anything else. But this really makes me want to do something like this out in the forest. That's pretty good right there. Okay, now what am I gonna do for this side? Cause not have me a pull. Well, if the frame pushes against it, I'm not gonna need one in that side. I don't think. All right, I got it. More spikes. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Well, I'm starting to think that if I just, if I lash this, here to the top that's going to keep everything from kicking in i'm trying not to use too many lashings i don't want this too big i mean my original plan was to put two stakes in like that and then tie them together basically at the top yeah that's what we're going to do okay yeah that's what we're going to do guys got one spike driven in over here I don't know about that far another one and the same so by putting them into this X here it's gonna keep keep these poles from being able to move now I'm just gonna lash each one make a couple notches doesn't have to be a lot of them I've found They don't even have to be super deep.
Whoa, did that fall and actually land perfectly there? Ah, ha, ha. All right, so I, so I got my notches cut. And again, that's just so that the lashing will have something to grab and it's not just grabbing that slick pole. That was so neat. I can hardly wait to see what that looked like when I edit. this bright fluorescent green kind of throws the rustic look doesn't it don't you think a little splash of color can what I do with this stuff now I tie all my own knots and stuff I've learned all my knots through like just life experience for me it's what's easiest and what works the best one knot you might already know is a slip knot that's where we take it and we just make a loop like this so we just make a loop and then we reach through the loop grab the rope and we pull that together and that's going to make a slip knot the reason we call that that is because if we pull on it the knot will slip right through so there's another way to use that we tie a knot in the very end here because if we don't that'll slip through you'll understand better don't forget this knot. If you have problems, remember, I gotta tie that knot in this end if it keeps slipping. So the end, the end goes in whichever the hand is dominant. Then we make that loop. So we just looped it over one time and reach through, grab, and then pull. See, that's all I'm doing. I'm just pulling it through and I'm making sure that the knot stays pretty. Okay, and that is like invincible. Once you put that over something, and it tightens down it's not going to loosen up unless you grab and pull so that's going to hold really well and then once you take it off of your object then all you have to do is pull the knot through and it disappears sometimes like if you haul a lot like i do that knot will stick and it isn't as easy as that but that's basically the principle Okay, so that's a knot that I practice, practice, practice. I can tie it backwards, forwards in my dreams. I just put that over the end here. And then run back over the next one. I'm just going to do a... So what I'm going to do is kind of just this. And then get, pull it and get it nice and tight. Everything's going to come together nice and tight. Then there's a trick here. I use it for everything and it's also part of my anthropology experiment so you just take holding it where it is take this and twist it so you get that loop again then put it over over the top and pull and pull that back towards where you're holding and pull it towards you and then twist it again like this and go over the top you're gonna pull it back and then towards you and then over the top again. About three times is all we need to get it strong. Why did that fail? Hang on guys. You might have to do an extra little trick with this. Okay, let's just... I think I gave it enough rope. I'm trying to conserve my lashing here. It's just over the top, that twist, keep it forward, over the top, over the top. And overkill also helps a lot in life. Okay, so that's pretty sturdy. I don't have to worry about that rolling out. I'll come back in later, and as I put it together, it'll sturdy up a little bit more. I come in, I'll put some more lashing through down here. It's all a work in progress and we can only do what we have. So I'm going to get the remaining four corners that way, cut the tops off and then start putting the, uh, the poles in and lashing them on. I had to retie these. I don't know what I was thinking. I had them above the, the last pole. So I put them below the ties below the last pole. I moved it down, down there too. That's our mattress here. Uh, now the stakes I've pulled. I'm not going to use stakes on the inside corners. They're up against the wall. I've put that one in there. That's going to hold 
this this set from sliding that way and the top from sliding that way though i'm not concerned with that plank going up in the back uh now on the inside here and opposite down here i'm going to actually just use these two very large stones i have which will do the same thing and hold the structure pushing out into the stakes down on these ends and see here i'm not even going to use a stake i might pile in some more stone against that corner and stone in here also It's got some heft to it. Okay. That's good. Gotta nail that in or drive that in. Okay, I need another one down on that corner. This one's not quite as large. I got more dirt to move to. I could scoop a lot of this over there into this. Sturdy it up from the outside. Okay, I need to cut these off here below where the mattress is going to go. Drive that stake in over there. And then after the bed's finished, or at least good enough for now, because out here, in, in this is just a simulated, you know, shelter and everything. Still though, in these kind of situations or this kind of lifestyle, that might be a way, better way to say it, this kind of lifestyle, uh, things get better every day. Sometimes they can fall back and, and stuff just happens, you know. Most of the time, though, once we get our survival situation, our structure and our routine down and, and functional, things get better and better every day because we have more time to improve and do things like, like the stove over again. Which later, if we have enough time in this video, uh, we're gonna walk down. I'll show you the grass clippings. I got some buckets that we're gonna haul up the grass clippings. Uh, and then we're going to make mortar for the stove because we're gonna rebuild it, build it over here. And we'll use mortar and stuff. I got a real education out of this. We can, we can do it better. Got a little boo-boo. You know what they say. If you aren't bleeding, you aren't having fun. Ha! Oh, smell of that is so nice. Dang. Fresh cut wood, yeah. Need that as my towing device. 
trying to get some more room in here to work. I always try and stop after a little while because it gets cluttered and I could trip or something, you know, twist an ankle, break a knee, something like that. It's not a cool hammer. I have one three times its size. Tom gave me both of them. That's quite, quite the monster right there. But yeah, I'll show you later down at the place. I have one that is like way bigger even. It's it's a monster hammer. Still need to lash down the poles. I want to get some more poles too. The bed's pretty good for right now. I want to move on to the floor. And then I'll come back and, and finish out the bed. See, I always take it up. So like in the mornings, I never ever leave my bed down. That's a good way to get critters in it. Good way for it to gather moisture. Uh, also the fewer poles too. If you're lucky enough to have like a mattress or something like this that's thick and takes up the, the space, the fewer poles will let the air get to the mattress from underneath also, which will keep it from, from mildewing or anything. Okay, I need to finish hanging up our deer hide. Little touches of home. I've left it with the holes. Haven't patched anything on purpose. I've got that one more piece. I just want to see how it behaves in the elements before I, I devote that piece. Obviously, I've got to cut some off the side here to close this in. That kind of stuff. It's coming along. Uncool. Oh, did I get that on camera? Dang it. Yes, I'm sure there are a lot, a lot of people right now saying, I told you that was going to happen. <laughs> oh, man. Dang, I was just sitting there picking out where the new fireplace is going to go. Just enjoying my bench slash bed that I've built. Thinking how nice it is to be able to sit down and boom, I could hear it. It was this little sound, right? And then all of a sudden it just went. Dang, I'm glad I wasn't sitting under it. <laughs> Okay, so I guess that means I need to rebuild the fireplace before I do the floor. Good news is, I think the fireplace is going to be a lot smaller, so we probably have enough stone here to build a lot rest of the house. Dang, guys, why didn't y'all stop me? I didn't realize I was building a stove for a castle. That's a lot of stone. <laughs> oh, man, my batteries. Okay. They're tough, right? Well, this one's still activated, so that's good. Let's see. Stuff's still falling over there. There's that. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I got four lights there. 76% on this one. Okay. It could have been worse. Uh, looks like our cat tail got crunched. <laughs> Trial and terror, trial and terror. We better light this up tonight. There's not gonna be much left to light if we don't. 
Okay, wow. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The bed worked. That could be prettier right now as I'm trying to say something worked. See, I just need to be spread out. Hang on, hang on. Hey, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, what are you thinking about, kid? There, see? Just need... Okay, so this video is going to get long. I got a lot of stone to move here, guys. What time is it? Probably about 2 in the afternoon. I got a couple hours left. I'm going to charge your battery. Grab me a cup of coffee. We'll come back up and uh, tackle this again. Shoot. Okay, well, good news is there's a lot of stone here. I don't have to haul anything in. I guess I'm just going to go straight through the roof right there. Yeah, straight through the dirt, straight through the roof. All right, coffee time. Okay, take this with me. Take this with me. Drive back some more poles on the way. Yeah, sun's not gonna be out for much longer. It's been a good day, guys. Just enjoying my coffee. Looking out at how beautiful that sky is. There's something about the sky in Washington. I mean, I've seen the beautiful, beautiful skies in so many places. There's something about the color shades, though, here. It's like there are so many very minutely different colors of blue on white. I'm thinking I want to keep these little uh, little shelter like videos kind of shorter if possible and everything. And I have been up since like four this morning. It's a pretty cool schedule, honestly. I wake up at like four, rock out with my friends on uh, on my live music broadcast. I uh, have a little bit of the the dark part of the morning left over. Then have the entire entire morning and the entire day. Think what I'm gonna do. Because I don't know, I see, we really need to haul up that straw, we need to mix mortar, and I think, I think all I could do with the rest of the light, because, well, look, guys, it'll, it'll be getting darkish soon. Yeah, all I could do is, like, process work, really move some stone around. Instead, I think I might try and edit this video together real quick, if it's a shorter one, uh, and easier to edit together, get that put out uh, maybe tomorrow, and then we'll go back up and, and work on the rest of the, the fireplace again. I'm so glad I got it on camera, though. I mean, that was cool, right? In about uh, 10, maybe 13 days-ish, I'll have the money to get my supplies for our actual adventure up on Chapaca. That'll be our real adventure. Up there, you never know what could happen. It's It's literally just dependent on on my own wits and survival skills and all that good stuff. That's so much fun. It's, it is like, it's something else. 